Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use GeoGebra to do a simple transformation. And if you look here, I'm at GeoGebra.org. I've already logged in. If you click on the sign in button in the top right corner, it will give you the option to sign in with Google. That just allows it to make it easier for you to save your GeoGebra work to the GeoGebra cloud. And this little waffle here lets you select which of the GeoGebra apps you wanna use. So when I click on it, I'm going to use the geometry app because I'm doing transformations. And it's loading the geometry app. The first thing I'm going to do is click on the mouse button. I always make it a habit to click on the mouse button after each um, construction I do so I don't start making points or lines or things that I don't want in my drawing. So I'm going to right click now onto the drawing area. I'm going to say show axes. I'm going to right click again and say show grid. I'm going to choose major grid lines. And now I can click and drag to reposition my coordinates. And I'm going to come over to the calculator menu. This is my input bar. I'm going to enter my points um, as ordered pairs. So I'm going to put my parentheses and then the point 3 comma 7. And it plots it. And I can come over here and reposition that uh, letter that it assigned to the point. And now I'm thinking I'm going to put another point at 6, 9. And I'll put a third point at 7, 6. And once we have our points in there, I'm saying, all right, I want to connect these so I have an actual polygon. And these are the vertices of my triangle. I'm going to go back to my graphics menu, choose the polygon tool, and I would click the letters in the order of the name of the polygon. So if I'm talking about a triangle ABC, I'm going to click on it in that order, A, B, and C. And now we see it's not quite closed until I click my starting point again. That closes the circuit. I click on my arrow tool so I don't construct any more points or lines by accident, and I'm just going to reposition everything. Now, if I click on the actual figure, I can change my colors. I can change the opac opacity of the shape. I can change the thickness of the line or the style of line. So I have my triangle and I want to apply a vector to this triangle. I'm going to go back to the calculator menu and on the input bar, I'm going to type vector. I started typing it and it gave me two choices. I can type a vector using a single point or a vector using a starting and ending point. I'm going to use the single point. And from the single point, this means I'm doing the component form of a vector. And again, inside of there, I have to use parentheses for the point. And let's put one comma two and close the parentheses hit enter. And you see, I have the component form of my vector here. It's going from the origin to the point one, two. And now I want to take that vector and apply it to each of the points of my polygon so that I can transform it in the plane. And to do that, I'm going to come back to my calculator bar here and I'm going to type a prime equals a plus. And I look into my algebra pane here and I see that the vector name is u. So I'm gonna say add u to it. And when I do that, I hit enter and notice there is an A prime that shows up on the coordinate plane. And that I had defined A prime as the image of A with vector U applied. So A is the pre-image, the vector U is the translation that's being done to the pre-image, and A prime is our image. And I will do this for the other three, other two points. So B prime will be B plus U. B prime equals B plus u, hit enter. I see my point is showing up in the coordinate plane. And the last one, c prime, is c plus u. And now I will connect these three with a polygon. After my construction, I click my mouse. Now I'll do my settings. I'll choose a different color. And now, to just demonstrate that we've got this translation, I can take my vector tool, I can grab it and move it around. So now I've changed the vector to have the component form of four comma one. That means that each point should move four 
units horizontally and one vertically. So let's come up to our point A, our pre-image. Let's move four horizontally, one, two, three, four, and one vertically, and we see we land on A prime, the image. And we can do that for each of the points. From B, we'll go one, two, three, four, one up, and we're at B prime. So this is our translation. We can use the vector to translate that triangle throughout the coordinate plane and um, position it however we want. This is to help with the learning of how uh, translations are defined using vectors. And we see that we have a vector in component form. That is the vector from the origin. But if I wanted to have the vector being illustrated for each point, I would go back to my algebra pane. And now for my input, I would go to vector and I would use the two point vector. What's my start point going to be? A. And then I hit the right arrow to get to the end point and I type A prime. And when I hit enter, we see that the vector is drawn in there. I'm going to click on it and change it to a dashed vector. I'll change its color to red. And now we see we have the vector from the origin to 4, 2, um, going from A to A prime. And that vector has the same direction and the same magnitude as my component vector. So we'll do this again. I'll say vector two points from B, right arrow to get to the end point, B prime. And then I'll change it to be a dashed line and red. And we see that we're just illustrating that the vectors are the same direction, same magnitude between these points. And my last vector translating C to C prime. Start typing in vector. GeoGebra gives me two choices. I choose the two point form, C, the right arrow, C prime, and enter. And then I'll change this to be dashed and red. And there you have it. We've done our construction in GeoGebra. Um, this is meant to be a learning example for students learning um, translations in the coordinate plane. We see that my co component vector is uh, controlling everything in the coordinate plane and that each of these vectors are translating each point independently, but those vectors have the same magnitude and direction as my component vector. And this is also known as a rigid motion because we see that the shape is got the same size angles and sides so they're congruent shapes this is going to be an important step when we get to congruent triangles in the next unit